five tips on how to make video teaching and video conferencing better. So the first one is perhaps not so obvious until you start thinking about it, but okay. Number one, sound is more important than picture. No, mostly when you do video conferencing, video teaching, you're very concerned with what you look like on screen. And you know what? That's not that important because the students know what you look like. Your video conferencing colleagues, they know what you look like. Most often you can mute the camera and only use the voice, but having good voice quality is extremely important. And the only way to find out the voice quality is to record yourself on whatever device you have, on your laptop, on your iPhone, your cell phone, whatever, and try it out with different microphones or without. So that's one thing you need to do. Right now I'm recording this on an iPhone. I'm using the picture from the iPhone, but I'm using the sound from a MacBook because the sound on the MacBook is better. And I clip this together afterwards. But I could, you know, in a video conference, do it the same way. I can, of course, if I'm using a cell phone um, and the noise is bad, I can, um, you know, put on a headset like this. It makes you look a bit dorky, but, you know, uh, the sound is more important, right? Uh, you can, of course, plug in a good microphone if you happen to have one, but pay attention to the sound. If you don't have all these technical means, pay attention to the ambient sound in the room. In fact, do that anyway. Um, try to get rid of fan noise squeaky things, um, any kind of distraction, because it is going to be very disturbing to what you do, particularly if you're speaking at length. So sound is more important than picture. Number two, avoid the obvious mistakes in the picture. And the pictures have to, uh, the, that, those obvious mistakes have to do with three things, the background, the light, and what you're wearing. So let's start with the background. As you see, I have a very discreet background here. And, and that's good because um, it doesn't take attention away from whatever I'm doing. If you have, you know, a lot of noise behind, normally there's a bookshelf behind here, but I just borrowed some cloth. You can take, you know, something and, and hung that over the bookshelf. Um, and I used a dark cloth and that makes for a nice background that doesn't disturb in any way. So that's an easy fix and it makes the whole thing much better. Number two is light. The light I have now is not perfect, but it's fairly good. It shows my face and it, it shows, you know, how my face moves so I can communicate using facial expressions. And I have light from two sources. I have a regular office light that comes down here. I have a, a, a professional light that is set up here, but you know, you could you just use a lamp that shines on your face sideways. Ideally, when you light up a person's face, you should have light from three, three sides. You should have something from about here, 15 degrees out of center. You should have something from the side. And then you should also have a little bit of light from, from the top. That's referred to as a hairline. So in a professional studio, they light you up in three, with three um, light sources. But pay attention to light. Also, whatever you do, light and background, whatever you do, don't you know, set yourself up so that you have a window in the background because then you're going to get light from behind. You are going to become a dark shadow, like a police informant in a mafia interview, and it is not going to look very good at all. So background, lights, and what you're wearing. And notice that I'm wearing a dark blue shirt. I could wear, you wear a white shirt or a red shirt, whatever. The important thing is that it is a solid color, no dramatic patterns, it doesn't draw attention to itself. If you have a striped shirt, uh, for instance, it can create that sort of vibrating pattern, which is very distracting to the students. And remember, you are, you know, they might see you in a very, very small picture and that distorts patterns. Also, um, you know, if you're wearing something that sort of calls attention to itself, then the students are going to see that and, you know, they're not going to get your message. Okay. Um, so don't make the obvious uh, mistakes in the picture. Okay, number three, look into the camera. It is very, very easy when you do a video conference to look at the picture of the other participants. And you're looking there and you're talking to them. You see some students maybe in a the picture there and you're talking to them. But what you're, you know, you look disengaged because, you know, people engage by looking you in their eyes, in, 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 you know, in your eyes. So, so, so look into the camera, figure out where the camera is and look there. That requires some training, some attention. It can be hard to do. 
But, you know, the, the payout is, you know, it, it looks like the students are, that like you are concerned about the student, not like you're sort of sort of reading a script off stage or off screen, uh, sort of speaking, you know, um, like going through the motions. It's very, very hard for students to, to pay attention to a video over a long time. So look into the camera. And number four, and that is related to the same thing. Be lively. The trouble with, you know, most of us, when we teach in a classroom, we react to the students and we can, con con you know, we talk to them, we, we get questions from them, we laugh, we crack a joke, things like that. Much, much harder to do in a video setting. You have to make a conscious effort to be lively. Use your hands a lot, at least I do. Um, you know, use facial expression. Pause, you know, do all these things. Try to be more dramatic to over communicate because the video consumes energy. There, you know, energy becomes less and less and less as you go through. For instance, if the students are looking on their cell phone, even more if they're looking on their cell phone at a computer screen with your little face down, you know, in the corner, you have to overdo what you're doing. On that note, too, you know. Pay attention to your face. Be as close to the camera as it feels comfortable to be and then be a little bit closer because you know, that commands attention. And um, again, not hard to do. Some of us are timid, but pay attention to it because it really carries your message across. And then the fifth and final uh, commandment, try before you fly. If you're going to do video teaching or video conferencing and you want to get your message across and use it effectively, it is not going to work if you turn up at the same time as you always turn up teaching in the classroom where there is a camera, for instance, and then just do whatever it is you do and assume that the support staff and the technology is going to make it just as easy. You have to adapt your teaching, both the script in what you do the format of your messages and how you behave in the camera, you know, in front of the camera differently from what you normally do. And that takes training. Specifically, it takes training in the tool. It is very distracting with teachers who don't know which buttons to click on and so on and so forth. The tools that are being used for video teaching, such as Zoom, Whereby, Aud and Adobe Auto um, Adobe Connect, um, you know, various tools like that. There are lots of them around. They're all fairly easy to use, but they do require that you sort of pay attention and learn the most obvious things, like how to mute your microphone, how to transfer control to another participant, how to read the chat messages that come in and respond to them, things like that. And the only way you can do that is to train a little bit. Don't, you know, show up, think that it is the responsibility of the tool and the support staff. Believe me, the support staff is working very hard right now to make this work because suddenly everybody's going to do it. You have to take command of the tool yourself. And the best way to do that is to sit down and try it out. You know, go online with a colleague. I sat an hour and a half last night with a colleague I'm going to teach with um, for the next three days. Um, you know, and go over the tool, try things out, agree this thing is good, this thing is not so good, this is how it works. Try it out and do, you know, spend enough time with the tool before you start doing anything um, so that you are familiar with it and you know which buttons to press. Because, you know, learning that while you're teaching is not a good way to do it. So there you have it to sum up. Sound is more important than picture. Don't make obvious mistakes such as background, light and what you're wearing in the picture. Look into the camera. Be much more lively than you normally are. Well, depends on who you are, but be lively and commun communicative. And five, try before you fly because you need to know the tools you're using. And the best way to do that is to try them. And with that, good luck with your video conferencing. I have to go and teach. <laughs>